Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Well, hello, hello, hello. This is going to be a fun-to-do podcast episode. It's called Seven Reasons Uber Should Get Into the Weed Business ASAP. Unfortunately, I don't smoke pot anymore. I did smoke quite a bit my freshman year at Berkeley. But uh, I I do have a uh, Nespresso uh, double shot, which I'm going to take a sip of right now. And I'm going to put on some Grateful Dead to kind of get us in the mood. There you go. Okay. Good. So I'm recording this on uh, Thursday, January 2nd. It's uh, 529 in the afternoon. It's been a long day, but I just got this brainchild. I was asked by my editor to come up with some ideas for articles for the rideshare guy. And I said, why is it, why isn't Uber getting into the weed business? She said, that's a good idea. Why don't you flesh that out? So I fleshed it out and I'm going to share it with you uh, before I even share it with my, uh, with my editor. Seven reasons Uber should get into the weed business ASAP. So just imagine the progression. You spend a, a, a long day at work, right? You're like tired and kind of cranky, a little stressed out. So what do you do? You walk outside, you, you order your Uber, and you have your Uber drive you home. And on the way home, just to kind of get into the mood, you ask the driver, can you put on some Grateful Dead? You know, the Grateful Dead, that's good getting high music. So you decided when you get home, you, you want to get high, okay? So you're in California or you're in Washington State or you're in Colorado where, where this is totally, perfectly legal behavior. But you know what? You know what? You don't have any weed. So what do you do? You go to your Uber app and instead of picking a car, you pick weed and you order your weed. Maybe you order uh, an edible and uh, a few joints, and uh, maybe some CBD oil to, you know, like rub on your neck so your neck doesn't feel quite so stressed out. And within a few minutes, like magic, the guy shows up, your Uber driver, and <laughs> might be your, might even be your same Uber driver, uh, and he delivers the weed to you. You don't have to exchange any money, right? You're a little stressed out, so you just want to just... Get your weed on your app. You can sit down and you can off. You can pay the guy a nice, nice fat tip. And uh, you know, you sit down and you, you. Let's just say you're going to smoke a little bit, and you, you smoke a joint, and you just start to feel that, you know, that wave of relaxation, kind of flooding through through you. That 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 asshole at work who was yelling at you about some project. Suddenly, it just doesn't really matter. You just kind of laugh about it. That's just life. Things start to take on a different kind of uh, proportions, right? When he was yelling at work, it seemed pretty offensive. But now you're relaxed and you're like, okay, he's just doing what he does all the time. Starting to feel it. Uh, You might be smoking some weed that gets you a little hallucinations a little bit, you know? So you start to kind of maybe see your hand move. You start to get those 
you know what? I don't know what they call it, but you move your hand and it, oh, trails, it kind of get trails, yeah. Um, and uh, so you're you're starting to really relax. Maybe you put on a put on a movie, you know, something you might want to watch. And and then what happens? You get hungry, right? And where do you go when you get hungry? You go to your Uber app. And there it is, Uber Eats. And you order. So if I remember when I used to get high, I used to love to eat Mexican food. Uh, so what I would order from uh, my local taqueria is a carnitas super burrito, hold the rice, right, and light on the beans. And what they do then is they put in a little bit of extra meat, a little extra cheese, sour cream, and a little pico de gallo. And it makes a fantastic uh, burrito. I just love the carnitas, which is the fried pork super burrito. So you order it. It's going to be arriving in about 15 to 20 minutes, right? So you're just enjoying your movie and boom, save driver. Okay, this is a very talented driver. He does, he does regular Uber. He does Uber weed and he does Uber Eats. And boom, there he is. He brings you again your... Your food, you got the munchies. This is going to be fucking awesome, right? And again, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about any money. You just uh, tip the guy on your app. You sit down in front of your TV with your uh, your Diet Coke with ice. And you got some chips and some green salsa. And you got your big fat burrito. And you can just leisurely enjoy it. Now just think how much love you'd feel for Uber at this moment in your life. They took you home, they brought you your weed, and then they brought you your, uh, your food, right? So why should Uber do this? Well, that's one reason. It adds a softer side to Uber's image, right? It uh, engenders more love from the clients, okay? So those are a couple reasons. Uh, but let me, let me go through the reasons from the top down. So first of all, number one, why should Uber get into the weed business? Weed is profitable, right? Uber needs to start making some money um, and, and cutting their expenses. So they're trying to move into businesses where the profit margin is a little higher, like we have with Uber money, right? Well, Uber weed would, act, would actually help them get towards their profit, uh, their profit goals. So that is the first one. Weed is profitable. Second, let's hear a little more Grateful Dead here. Oh, truckin'. Y'all know this song. Oh, it's great. Great song. Can you imagine if we were all high right now and listening to the Grateful Dead eating our burrito? It'd be pretty awesome. Okay, weed is profitable, number one. Number two, weed is a huge growth industry. Massive. Don't believe me. The Motley Fool. All right. Motley Fool. They uh, found three sources that were uh, projecting growth for weed. They expect weed to grow 38% this year, 2019. The year just passed. Oh, wait. No, they expected it to grow 38% in 2019 to 16.9 billion and hit 31 billion. So from 17 to 31. By 2022, that's in that's only in two years, right? Uh, that's a compound annual growth of 27 percent between 2017 and 2022. Another group forecasts that the weed industry will be at 75 billion in sales by 2030. That's only 10 years away, right? That's just crazy. And uh, the third estimate. Uh, 17 billion in 2000 to 50 billion by 2029, and then the other company says 75 billion by 2030. So massive, massive. And then it says, however, and this is a pretty big however, Bennett believes the global cannabis industry has the potential to grow to 130 billion in annual sales. Crazy. Okay, so uh, Uber would be getting into a big, huge growth industry. And everywhere they start to expand with their cars, they expand with Uber Eats, they can expand with their weed because the trend is for weed to become legalized and they would be at the forefront of that. I'm telling you, Uber should hire me. This is a great idea. Okay, 
So uh, wheat is uh, profitable. Wheat is a huge growth industry. Number three, they already have drivers, right? So they already have people. They already have the delivery mechanism in place. They already have the drivers. So we, they have a, an army of drivers ready to deliver the weed to the people. Uh, number four, compatible with Uber Eats, right? We just, in my little story I just shared with you, uh, where we all got high eating a burrito, um, the person who drives you home with, with Uber can then uh, deliver your weed and then can deliver your food. So it, it, it all works together. It all, it's all very simpatico. Number five, I mentioned this before, it engenders more love from the clients. So yeah, we love to eat, but many people love to get high more than they love to eat. And they're going to associate that good feeling, that good, high, relaxed, peaceful feeling with Uber. Let's face it, Uber's had a pretty tough image problem compared to Lyft. They're the badass company, whereas Lyft is kind of the softer, gentler Uber. This would make Uber seem a lot uh, softer and gentler because their clients would be getting high with their stuff, and uh, that would be great for them. Be good for business. Um, Six, it would add a softer side to Uber's image, right? So not only would the clients love them more, but just the general image of Uber would soften quite a bit, uh, moving them a little more towards Lyft, but but, but at the same time being very aggressive at a high growth, uh, high profit, profit industry. And then a seven, and this is a this is brilliant. They can create a, a national holiday, the Uber Smokeout Day, the Uber Smokeout Day. So basically, everyone just takes off of work for a day. You go to a big coliseum, all right, a big stadium in each town, right, wherever Uber is. Same day, and uh, Uber, uh, you pay whatever, a hundred dollars for the day, and you go in and and you're handed uh, some weed. And you can sit down and you can get high. And then Uber will show up with Uber Eats and bring a whole bunch of food. And you can eat a whole bunch of food. And then uh, at the end of the day, uh, Uber will pick you up and take you home. Right? So it's just a fantastic day where Uber caters to all your needs. And um, it becomes a thing. Uber smoke out days becomes a thing. So what do you think? While I initially thought this was kind of a crazy idea, you know, as I fleshed it out, it's not such a bad idea. Um, it certainly is fun to talk about. So what do you think? What do you think? Am I onto something here? Should Uber uh, get into the weed business? Should uh, they cater to their clientele that they're already uh, uh, servicing with uh, Uber Eats and with Uber? I think so. I think so. I think this could turn it around for Uber and uh, they could become profitable and be at the forefront. We could, you know, Uber can, can, can provide services for so many aspects of life um, and they could really dominate the world. So there you go, Uber. There's some free advice for you. Seven reasons Uber should get into the weed business. All right. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. All right. That's a wrap. Fist bump. To all you drivers out there, you all rock out there every day. Um, I honor you. This is my first recording of the new year, and I love it. And I'm looking forward to doing more recordings and more interviews uh, to bring to you uh, throughout 2020. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.